Good morning and welcome to day three of the Ashford University Teaching and Learning Conference. My name is Jerry Ford and I will be your host for this session. It is entitled Quantitative Study on the Effect of Web-Based Tutorials on the Achievement of Learning Outcomes in Online Accounting Courses. Our presenter for this session is Dr. Catherine McBride. We're excited that you've joined us today for this presentation. The chat window is now open, so feel free to participate and ask questions. Please welcome our presenter. Thank you very much. Um, okay, so as Jerry says, as he said, I'm doing, a, I'm going to discuss a quantitative study of the effect of web-based tutorials on the achievement of learning outcomes. Um, my study is specific to online accounting courses, but it applies equally well to like the online economics courses, online math courses, um, basically any course that can use a web-based tutorial. So the reason that I conducted this study is because I'm teaching more and more online classes. And as we're well aware, there's a trend where online is actually growing faster than the on-site classes are. So with 31% of on-site students taking online classes and the annual growth in online classes far outweighing the growth in on-site classes, the pedagogy that we use in the online environment has become increasingly important. And as most of us, I'm sure, are already aware, the pedagogy for teaching online is not identical in quantity or quality to the pedagogy for teaching on site. So a lot of the skills that we have from teaching on site are transferable, but we need to adapt new skills and new technology to improve our online pedagogy. So I started by looking at a tremendous amount of literature. And what I learned is that more than a third of higher education institutions are offering completely online degree programs. As you're obviously aware, Ashford is one of the leaders in online education. I also learned that gaps exist in the current pedagogy, which I'm sure that if you're teaching, you felt that as well. Um, we're being pushed to learn more and more technology, integrating videos into our classes, uh, integrating videos into feedback, looking at other ways of communicating the information and eliminating some of the academic integrity issues that we're finding in the online environment. Technology advances have made alternative methods of delivering information possible, whereas even five years ago, it wasn't really realistic. I was extremely concerned about teaching accounting online because it's not just important that the students master the material in the course, it's equally important or even perhaps more important that if they're going down the accounting track that they're able to pass the CPA exam at the end and then be competitive with all the students from all the other universities. So it was the increases in technology that really made me convinced that teaching in the online environment works as well as teaching in the on-site environment. Online students are increasing at a rate 10 times greater than on-site students. And it's absolutely critical because of the large number of online students that we're delivering the same quality of education, meeting the same learning outcomes in the online environment as we do in the on-site environment. So I started looking at, you know, well, what is the answer to that? And the thing that I saw a lot of schools using and that I had started using was web-based tutorials. They've become more advanced. They've become more available with virtually all of the textbook publishers offering their own version of the online tutorials. So when I started looking at those, um, I noticed, and, and I started using them, I noticed that my students performed better. But I, I was interested in finding a way to prove that they actually perform better and in looking to see, you know, what evidence out there shows that they perform better. Because I also noticed that at some universities that were using them, the students weren't performing as well as they were at other universities that were using them. So I also became convinced that part of the key to having them successfully use online tutorials to achieve the learning outcomes was implementation and how the faculty used the reports and the information that those online tutorials can give us about our students. So I wanted to study the difference between the learning modality on site and online. 
and try to find a way to fill in the gap in the online pedagogy. So that my students would be prepared for the CPA exam, would be prepared for competitive careers. And so I started to look at all the advantages of tutorials offered. So the purpose of my study was specifically to determine whether using these web-based tutorials actually related to an increase in the achievement of learning outcomes in online accounting courses. A lot of the studies that examine the benefits of web-based tutorials take it from a standpoint of student persistence or student engagement and then make the assumption that if the students are more engaged, then they're going to do a better job of achieving the learning outcomes. And while that's, that's probably true, I mean, certainly lack of engagement means that you're not going to achieve the learning outcomes. Engagement doesn't necessarily mean that you are achieving the learning outcomes. So I was looking for a quantitative evidence that proved that using the web-based tutorials did in fact increase the achievement of learning outcomes. So the research question that I was answering is, what is the difference, if any, between final exam grades in online accounting courses utilizing web-based tutorials and online accounting courses not utilizing web-based tutorials? And the reason that I chose to use final exam scores is because this particular university that I studied used exactly the same final exams that were tied to every five questions tied to each learning outcome. So the exam remained the same over the period of years that I was looking at, and the learning outcomes remained the same. So I had an exam that was tied to learning outcomes, which means that their grade on the final exam was a good indicator of their achievement of the learning outcomes, and the exam remained the same. So it gave me a good basis for really looking at whether using the web-based tutorials changed the final exam grades or not. When I, when I started looking at implementation and what part of web-based tutorials make a difference for students, I broke it down into the pieces that are so beneficial or that I felt were beneficial in the web-based tutorials. I looked at the video clips and I looked at the immediate feedback specifically. And I, I looked at those areas because in all of my end of course evaluations, no matter where I teach, one of the most important things to students is instructor feedback. I mean, we all know that if we provide timely feedback and the quicker we grade and the more feedback we provide, the better our end of course evaluation is, no matter what course we're teaching and no matter what student body we're teaching with. So, so I looked at the, specifically at the quality of immediate feedback. And then I also looked at video clips and I looked at several things there and one was, um, you know, do video clips seem to improve students' retention of the concepts? Do students take advantage of the video clips because of their different learning methodologies? Do students prefer shorter video clips or longer video clips? And how does the online tutorials address those students' needs? So my hypothesis was that there is no difference between final exam grades in online accounting courses utilizing web-based tutorials and online accounting courses not utilizing web-based tutorials. So then my alternate hypothesis, which I was hoping to prove, is that there is a difference between final exam grades in online accounting courses utilizing web-based tutorials and online accounting classes not utilizing web-based tutorials. So I used a correlational study, which means that I took data from um, over 100 students at National University, and I did t-tests to determine whether the final exam grades were different or significantly different in the courses utilizing web-based tutorials versus the final exam grades in the courses not utilizing web-based tutorials. I, and I, I have to recognize several limitations. <clears throat> Um, although I was able to eliminate a lot of the limitations that exist in many of the studies that I've looked at by using the same exam tied to learning outcomes, there were still limitations that I couldn't eliminate. 
For instance, um, prior academic and professional accounting experience is not taken into consideration. Um, because I'm dealing with a student body that often works and has children and family, you know, husbands, um, I wasn't able to account for how much time they divided between coursework, children, and employment. So obviously those can make a difference in the achievement of course outcomes also. I didn't take into account their online course experience and some of the classes that I looked at are earlier in the program. And then I didn't um, do any study on the amount of time invested in the course. So what I did learn <clears throat> was first I did a test for homogeneity and that what that meant was that I was looking to see are my two groups similar enough to compare. If my two groups aren't similar enough to compare, then my data would be meaningless. So I looked at, are the two groups similar enough to compare? And the, the tests that I did for that showed that they are indeed similar enough to compare. So then I looked at the descriptive statistics that I came up with. And I looked at the, the minimum exam score and the maximum exam score. So with no web-based tutorials, the minimum exam score was a 30 and the maximum exam score was a 97.5. And this was out of almost 200 students that I studied, which gave me a mean exam score of 70.6, not utilizing web-based tutorials. With web-based tutorials, my minimum final exam score was a 50, and my maximum final exam score was a 100. So the difference there gave me a mean of 78.5. So basically there's an eight point difference on average in the final exam scores between the students that did not utilize the web-based tutorials and the students that did utilize the web-based tutorials. And so the box plot on the right kind of exemplifies, you know, where the, the gap exists between the students that are not utilizing the web-based tutorials and those that did in their courses. But now the question still exists whether that's actually significant or not. So my finding showed me that it is indeed significant. The difference between the achievement of learning outcomes in the students that did use the web-based tutorials versus the learning outcomes in the students that did not use the web-based tutorials is a significant difference. So what does that mean? So my question tells me that there is a difference between final course grades in online accounting courses utilizing web-based tutorials versus the online accounting courses not utilizing web-based tutorials. So that left me with, all right, so I can see that there is a significant difference. What does that mean? What does that mean for my teaching? What does that mean for my students learning? What does that mean for course development and implementation? What are the advantages and the disadvantages for utilizing web-based tutorials? So one of the things I did when I was looking at how do we use this to make better decisions and build better courses is I went back and I looked at what other studies have been done. <clears throat> and there was a study that, that that examined the, path, the course passage rates for students utilizing web-based tutorials. And it showed a difference of 57.2% passage rate to a 79.8% passage rate. So not only did web-based tutorials in this study show that the achievement of learning outcomes is better, but it also showed that the passage rates were significantly higher, which feeds into obviously student retention. I looked at a study that showed that, that specifically examined what about web-based tutorials were most important to students. And this study found that immediate feedback encourages a deeper understanding of the concepts being studied. That students take that immediate feedback and use it to make, um, to make better decisions about you know, what areas to study and how to master the concepts the dog outside. Um, I looked at the kind of extra instruction that's available in the online tutorials where the students can go in and choose to, if they're struggling on a concept, they can go in and choose to 
rework problems or work some additional problems and found that that extra instruction that's available improves the mastery level for all the students in the class. Another study showed that immediate feedback better engages the students throughout the course and, and that engagement improves student persistence. And we already know this because when we give feedback at the end of the week, it, is, it engages the students better than if it's delayed feedback. But with accounting or other courses like accounting in particular, the sooner they have the feedback, the better. I mean, I know that you've had the same experience that I've had where you think everything's going on okay during the week and you get to the end of the week, they turn in their homework, here you are grading it and they're into the next concept for the next week and you realize, oh my gosh, some of my students didn't get this at all. And you're figuring out, you know, how do I go back and reteach it? How do I, you know, it, these are concepts that build, I can't just let it go. How do I connect with the students? How do I help them understand it? And how do I know that they understand it? And the, the, these answers and solutions can be found in the web-based tutorials. A study in Australia was conducted with 600 Australian accounting students. And it proved that online tools improve the average final exam grades. So here's a study that was done just the way I did mine that used 600 students instead of 200. It showed that learning is improved when students can develop their individualized learning experiences because these online tutorials allow students to access to additional videos, access to practice problems, access to the textbook, access to the textbook um, linked to whatever they're learning or struggling with, allows them a dashboard where they can see their own progress through the core concepts, the, the options that you can set it up with to encourage your students to engage with the course are extremely substantial. In addition to just the benefits in learning, academic integrity improves with the online tutorials. I know that we've all had that experience where they're turning in their accounting homework or their economics homework, and you know, you know that they're using the solutions manual. You know it from the wording, you know it from the formatting, but it's not gonna show up on Turnitin because everybody's is virtually the same because that's the correct answer. The numbers in the right order is the correct answer. So it's not gonna show up on Turnitin. But you know, you know that they're not doing their own work. And one of the things that I love the best about online tutorials is that I can take those online tutorials and I can assign the same problems that I assigned before, but now they can be algorithmic instead of static. So they'll have the same concepts with different numbers. You can also give them opportunities for, you know, like practice problems where they have unlimited attempts with feedback in between or homework problems where they have the opportunity to check their answers once so that when they're done, they've had a better opportunity to go back and fix any, you know, small mistakes that they've made and they have the feedback on the problem once they've submitted it. The interaction with faculty is greater, more pinpointed and more personal. The students have the ability to email specific questions when they're working on them. But also faculty have a dashboard where they can see exactly where the students are struggling, how much time they're spending on each issue, where their mastery is, and where their lack of mastery is. So that now you can tailor your discussion posts, now you can tailor your course announcements, now you can tailor your additional resources for exactly those areas where students are struggling. The video in the online tutorials activates emotion, which increases students' engagement. In addition, I learned that millennials respond particularly well to videos because millennials, and I, I live with two of them, millennials have been connected to technology from day one. And the generation following them will be even more connected to videos. These students have, um, have often spent time in a high school classroom learning from videos. There are more and more classes that are flipping the classroom where the students are watching videos and then going to, when they go for homework and then when they go to class, they're answering questions and working with the material. Plus millennials are used to pulling up a YouTube video if they want the answer to something. 
So more than my generation, they respond very well to, to videos. Also, checks for understanding enhance recall. We all have learned, this isn't a jump, because we all have learned that summarizing the material at the end, like summarizing the discussion posts at the end of the week, summarizing what they've learned in a course announcement helps students recall information. Checks for understanding do also because they have to access that information one more time, and that helps to um, enhance their recall. Additionally, Student perception of learning is not accurate. One study showed that students assessed their learning at 78% competency, but then when they took a test, they actually scored at 48%. But with these checks for understanding, they will be able to look at where they really are. They'll be able to get an assessment, and so they'll be in more control of their own learning. Online checks for understanding actually reduce that gap from 30% down to 2%. The benefits to students is that there are problem-based lessons that encourage them to strive for a higher level of understanding. They have online mini lectures that they can use. They have walk-through demonstration problems that take them through the entire competencies for that week. They're located in their book also, but they're just not as engaging as when you actually can walk through it and work it. There are opportunities to check your work. There are opportunities for multiple attempts and there are specific links to the relevant pages in the textbook. There's benefits for the faculty also. The dynamic problems improve academic integrity. There's a dashboard that you can look at that shows you specifically how your students are performing and where the gaps are. They the, the problems are automatically graded. And, and I would like to say that this saves time for the faculty which, I mean, we'd all like to be able to do our job faster, I'm sure. But what it really does is it saves time in grading, but it gives you more information. So now if you invest that time savings in focusing the attention where you really need to spend it, your students will perform better overall. And that presents the higher achievement of learning outcomes. So let's start with how many of you have used, how many of you have used um, web-based technology in your courses? I've used them when I taught hybrid classes at local community college, but not here at Ashford. I actually started using them in the beginning with hybrid classes too. And originally they were what convinced me to be, to be willing to teach accounting online. But then I realized that I might as well use them on my on-site classes as well. I get a lot of positive feedback when I integrate videos into my courses. Like I'll typically put them in, in, in the announcements or I'll put them um, in the discussion board. Yeah, I've had, recently I've had um, a lot of students, especially at Ashford, start commenting on them. I've learned that they have to be short though. Like you don't wanna do a video more than about five or 10 minutes. Yeah, that's probably true. One of the things that I learned um, about videos that was interesting to me, which made sense once I, once I thought about it. Um, we're used to checking out when we watch videos. Most of us, you know, it's like you turn the TV on and it's kind of a time to check out. You're, you're watching a movie on a screen and so you kind of just check out. And, um, and so it's a difference because you have to actively engage in the videos. Which, which is a learning difference that we're not used to, especially if we're older. I typically create online modules and linking out doesn't always work. Very short videos, right? Yeah, the links you have to, um, I, I'd love to say that I built a database of my own videos, but I wrote a dissertation instead and I'm raising two teenagers, but I would like to do that. I'm also interested in additional research. On the next slide, I have um, my contact information and then pages and pages of references. But if anybody's interested in research and publishing, um, I've been working on that and, and I'm interested in some of the areas that I haven't looked at with this or implementing it in our accounting classes. 